Have you had a chance to speak with uh, Speaker Pelosi since the win? You know, she called on election night, actually, and gave us a congratulatory um, call. And uh, also the president and vice president called us the next day as well, which was really exciting. Um, but yeah, you know, I think that this race was watched closely all over the country and especially by leadership in the White House and in Congress. And because this race was, I think, in very, very much a bellwether for the national political narrative, um, how it was going to affect the 2022 elections, and also because it's an important race for New Mexico, and because this seat was, of course, to replace our amazing Secretary Deb Holland, and so many across the country were watching it closely, including the speaker. Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing that you mentioned about the national focus when you <laughs> go through Facebook and look at all the headlines. It's like for two days, your name almost dominated all pol political talk. It was amazing. What did you make of that? I mean, I'm talking about Bellwether. Uh, did you realize how many people were watching this race this closely? You know, the thing that actually hit me the biggest was we got a request for me to come onto the BBC and we were literally the international BBC headline the next day or two days after. And that surprised me that people across the world were actually interested in this race because of the national implications for it. And I received messages from New Zealand and England and all over the place. Um, so that really surprised me. But, you know, I think it became clear, especially I'd say about a month out in this race, that especially after the Texas elections happened, that this was the next big national race that everyone was watching. And that's when really, you know, we, the Washington Post and the New York Times and all this national media started following the race. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't so much surprised, but I think um, the, the degree of win that we had and the margin, I think really shocked people. Um, mm -hmm. It didn't shock us because we were out in the community talking to people in the community. But um, I think that it really sent a strong message and people are still trying to sort out what does it mean? What does it mean for the parties? What does it mean for, you know, President Biden's agenda? What does it mean for New Mexico? So it's been really interesting to see all of the coverage of the race. It's been interesting for sure. Um, you know, I, I can't say I've known any congressional member that ever went into office without a one burning thing that really, really burned in them that they wanted to get after. It may not even been stuff on the campaign trail, but I think it is for you with the environment. It, mm -hmm. Do you have one thing you're going to go to Washington to with a goal that you want to see elevated, some some issue or something? You know, water and climate change is the thing that I am so passionate about and have spent my whole life working on. And uh, I formerly worked as a Senate staffer in the Senate Energy Committee, where I worked on water policy at the national level. And when you look at what's happening right now with the drought across the West and climate change, it is the next big major issue for the West. And I'm excited to work with my colleagues to help, you know, bring some new ideas around water policy and how we can support our communities. And especially through the lens of equity, because there's still communities that don't have access to safe drinking water and that need water infrastructure and things like that. So that's sort of my passion project, but I think you know, in the short term, our job is to continue the work of helping the country and New Mexico get back on its feet after the pandemic. So getting, you know, the relief and recovery packages passed and this infrastructure package, hopefully across the finish line. So for me, that's the immediate work ahead and really helping to bring and deliver dollars back home to New Mexico. So we're in the exciting phase of starting to get our office stood up. And one of the things that we're really hoping to do is have a strong presence in helping to get federal resources home. Mm. May I swing back to infrastructure? I appreciate the way you finished that thought. Let me kind of stitch it to what you just mentioned. Obviously, this is big in the news right now. On Capitol Hill with President Biden not having some success with some GOP members and now kind of going it with a, a different group of bipartisan folks. I, have you got your eye fixed on anything infrastructure wise for this district that you would like to see happen if we have an infrastructure bill uh, that does pass? Yeah, so the three big things that I think are really critical and this came from, you know, constituents and state and local and tribal government officials mm -hmm. is number one is broadband. You know, the digital divide, I think, and the implications of not having broadband access during the pandemic mm -hmm. have just really revealed that our rural areas, our tribal areas 
absolutely need broadband and the federal government has resources and these infrastructure packages have resources for broadband, but we need desperately to bring that money home so we can get it in the ground. Mm -hmm. um, the second I think is drinking water infrastructure. You know, one of the communities that's in CD1 is the Tohajali chapter of the Navajo Nation and really severe drinking water challenges in that community. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, also in other chapters of the Navajo Nation and other communities that really need drinking water infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And the third really important piece, which I'm very excited about in the American Jobs Plan and the Biden um, infrastructure package is all of the money for the grid and renewable energy. And you know, New Mexico is really on the precipice of the clean energy revolution. We passed a grid modernization bill last year. We passed the Energy Transition Act in 2019. So we are like poised to really do big things in the clean energy space, but we need that extra support and incentives to build out that sector. So those are the three pieces that I think are really critical. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, when you think about our long tradition of our House members working very closely with our Senate members, as a block, as a coalition in New Mexico, uh, to bring those federal dollars home. Have you had a chance to talk to Senators Heinrich and, and Lujan? Have you had a chance to kind of just get your heads together and think about what you might want to do in the future? So we haven't had the opportunity yet to do policy planning together, but of course, Senators Heinrich and uh, Lujan were very supportive in our campaign. And I did have the opportunity to sit down with Senator Heinrich last week and start to kind of map out our collaboration. I've also been talking to Congresswoman Ledger Fernandez, who has, you know, been just a huge role in helping support me as I'm getting started. Mm -hmm. And um, Congresswoman Harrell will actually be um, helping with the squaring in next week, though we haven't had a chance to talk yet. Mm -hmm. But, you know, New Mexico, I think, is really fortunate in that we have a very tight congressional delegation that works really closely together and that works really closely with our state officials, with the governor and, and the leadership in the legislature. So I'm excited. We, we got some big, important things to do. Thank you very much for spending some time with us. We, we know you're running fast and hot today, so we'll let you go. But really, thank you so much for spending some time. And once again, congratulations. Thank you. And thank you for having me on. It was wonderful to be with you today.